what do you guys exactly. think is going to happen this election cycle? And, and then let's juxtapose it to what you want to happen. Well, I had a long talk with Tori about this on the way. And obviously, if it hasn't been obvious yet, um, I voted, uh, early voted on Saturday for Kamala Harris. Um, and... There's that little soft applause. You know, there. I definitely... Um, have over the years like gone more you know bad word socialist and like things like that and my views or whatever and I try to vote third party or you know um independent or whatever in primaries and then if it doesn't work out then I definitely do the lesser of two evils I'm not some Kamala sycophant who you know <laughs> is like 100% on board with everything obviously I definitely don't share her um, position on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, things like that. Um, but the alternative, obviously, is not where we want to be either. And um, but how I'm feeling, so obviously, the outcome I want is for there to be our first female president. Um, and Kamala comes out on top after Tuesday. But I also really genuinely looking deep into the polls and. Um, not just listening to, and I know it's going to sound conspiratorial because I do respect journalism and the media and everything like that, but um, you can't trust like the cable news polls. I don't think it's that close. I genuinely believe based on deeper dives into polling and the fact that we're not capturing Gen Z and a lot of millennials as far as the polls go and things like that, that she not only wins, but I think she wins comfortably. And I think that um, Trump is even aware of that. And I think we're seeing that in the behaviors that his campaign is displaying. And I think that he's already starting to prime his base to, I mean, Kamala could take all 50 states and he's going to contest it regardless. But he's trying to froth up his base already as it is that, like, there's no way he can possibly lose. And so if Kamala wins, it must have been a stolen election. And I think that um, the situation we're looking at post Tuesday is going to be a lot of confusion, a lot of angry people, a lot of... Which, um, to be fair, that has been, like, the mantra. I mean, for the last four years since Joe was elected, we've spent the last four years with him and Rudy Giuliani basically and crying to the Repo dying day too. <laughs> that this was a rigged election. The last one was a rigged election. And so if... It's not like he can just change his tune anyways. Like, legitimately, he has to stick but with the same thing. But if he thing. wins, it was well, legitimate. Well, Caitlin, you know doggone well. He keeps very good track of his records. <laughs> so that's where I am right now in my head. Um, as far as not only, obviously, what I want to happen, but what I really do feel and mm -hmm. see um, as someone who does do deeper dives into things. And, you know, the media, they want it to be a horse race. Like... You're not but if it's not close, what's there to talk about? Right. You're not going, if you're at a football game and in the fourth quarter, you know, it's zero to 40, you're probably not going to stay to the end of the football game. Yeah. They need people tuning in at the end of the day to their round tables and their talk shows and their pundits. And, and we need you know, people tuning into ours. Right. And so they got to make it yeah. seem close. And I just, I'm right. I don't actually think it is at all. Um, I think that she's winning comfortably. I think she knows that. And I think that Trump knows that too. <laughs> I think it's absolutely amazing to see <coughs> the numbers, which it always depends on, you know, where you're going to get your sources from. I get a lot of people that ask me where I get my sources from, and honest to goodness, my favorite one that I always tell them is NPR. It's like one of the best ones that I can look up, look into. They cover a super wide range of topics, but I also, like, when I'm looking for sources and stuff, some of the biggest things that I always look for are .org and .edu, sources brought from, like, colleges and stuff it's honestly it's kind of nice too on google i noticed like they're now telling you where the websites are being sponsored by and kind of who's paying for them which is also a very important thing to look at because one of the scariest things going into this election right now and mark cuban just talked about this too is like it's kind of shifting from it being kamala versus trump and it's heading into kamala versus musk because he <laughs> is now such a An ginormous influence influence slash benefactor behind trump's whole organization and i think it's really important to to focus this time around in this election on not just the two main ticket runners on not just kamala and not just trump because we have a tendency to put all of our <laughs> eggs into just these two human beings right. baskets and it's like you have to step out and honestly take a look at their running mates 
You have to take a step out and look at their administration. You have to step out and look at who's supporting them, who's backing them. Like when you factor in all of those different things, no matter how much Trump might want it to be about this dictatorship that he's revolved around himself and his little godlike world, it is so much bigger than him, especially because I don't he's think an he makes aging it out man. All four years, like if he were to win, I don't think he makes it. And then we've got President JD Vance, and I almost think that's scarier. Do you think he's? Oh, just I think that's like, the plan. Do you think the McDonald's are gonna get is gonna get to his heart or something, or do you think I he's mean, gonna he's go old anyway? Do you think um, he's gonna go down? Because, I think the stress is gonna get to him. Because unfortunately, the Supreme Court has basically given the president immunity while right. he's in office. So I like, don't think he knows that behind the scenes, a lot of people in his orbit are planning to kind of phase him out once they're gonna he, 15th amendment him or you think jd vance is gonna we're gonna, gonna have president jd vance amendment. he's gonna be in the oval office fucking the couch <laughs> <laughs> and that's it i don't think i don't think he's clever enough to pull that off and i unfortunately <laughs> don't think well he does, here's the secret he, i don't think he has to be he clever doesn't have enough to be to no absolutely not well, I don't somebody mean else Trump, just has to be the guy no that's what i mean jd vance doesn't have to be none of them have to be clever enough they just have to be in the right place at the right time the project 2025 people who are pulling the strings 100 yeah the heritage foundation heritage foundation and yet elon musk is the one bankrolling his campaign yeah well, so he's probably tied in i'm sure but even despite that i think he's well i don't think he needs to be he tied doesn't in he doesn't need to be he, i think it's he just a grifter <laughs> and that's uh you know something <laughs> that he sees as another quote-unquote worthwhile investment exactly that will probably yeah. go belly up and be a huge waste of money, and then he'll bitch about it. Well, he's totally ruined the ground game for Trump in the election. He took over, yeah. <laughs> and well, him and Laura Trump both because she took up took over the RNC, and um, so Laura Trump is Trump's daughter in law, and um, she they have no ground game right now. So that's one of the biggest things that's hurting them. I think especially in the swing states too, mm -hmm. is that they took over a tried tried and true strategy for the Republicans and trashed it basically and i think that that's going to cost them big time too and i th i will say that is one thing that's like irritated me over these last oh God, almost 10 years honestly at this point i have heard over and over and over again people claiming that they don't want politicians in the white house i'm sorry but in what world bit. do you not hire somebody that's a licensed plumber to come <laughs> over and fix your toilet you think you would want somebody that knows what they're doing dealing with the shit if you will yeah. because honestly why do we have anybody go out there and learn how to do anything and acquire any sort of like education in their life if we're just going to look at them later on and be like you're too establishment <laughs> i can't be part of your agenda <laughs> but at a certain point they kind of went to school they got the education they've got the accreditation they've been part of this and it's not for nothing they know what they're doing in a lot of circumstances that relate to large policy.